Okay. Well, Mastering Grail's restful web services. We'll check back on this in a moment here. But um, uh, about 50 lines. And as you would imagine, you just switch on the method. Switch request method. If it's a get, do this. If it's a post, do this. If it's a put, it's a delete. And in each case, it's two or three lines of code to do that. Mm. Disappointing. All right. We'll come back to it. So are you beginning to get a flavor for what I'm talking about here? This is a very low ceremony way of dealing with web services. But it's not for toy applications. This is written by a doctor of you know, dissertation. This is really a, a high capacity, high availability way of managing this. And if we start looking at the YouTubes and the Ebays and the Yahoos and the Googles of the world, they're all providing restful web services. So we know this is very clearly ready for prime time. So coming back now, SOAP, SOA, is an is a SOA implementation. So we now know what REST is, representational state transfer, a resource-oriented architecture. But what implementation can we use? Some people like arguing SOAP versus REST, REST versus SOAP, but that's really two different terms. We need to either argue an architectural style versus an architectural style, which is perfectly valid. RPC versus resource-oriented, fine. Or we need to argue implementation versus implementation. SOAP versus... What? Yeah, HTTP, yeah, but we're going to take it a little bit farther. You're absolutely right. So, what we have here is something you're probably very familiar with. Syndication. If I pop up this, you've probably seen these t-shirts, right? I'm blogging this. And this is the 21st century equivalent. I'm tweeting this. Yeah, yeah. But all these are predicated on this notion of syndication. What does this symbol mean? RSS, ah, oh, good. That was a trick question. You're absolutely right. But RSS is one implementation of syndication. There's also Atom. And there are a number of different ways we can implement this. So SOAP is an implementation of SOA. RSS is an implementation of syndication. And you'll see syndication has a couple of key concepts. It definitely has chronology baked into it. When you go to a blog, you're always going to get the most recent blog entry first. But syndication goes beyond that simple temporal notion of a blog. Because when we go to Amazon, we always want to see the latest books. I worked for a company, uh, Open Logic, in the States, where we were writing an installer for open source. So very big Fortune 100 companies would want to know when the latest version of JBoss shipped and the latest version of Ant and bug fixes and critical patches, all these kinds of things. We were able to set up an Atom feed for this. And what was interesting about Atom is not only did it have this chronology, but in Atom it supports multiple MIME types. So we could have an HTML version for the systems administrators to read, but we could also have an XML version that our demons could read, our applications that are running in the organization pulling these feeds down. We could even have a MIME type for the gzip files so that we could pull down the binaries of those particular patches as well. So you can see this goes far beyond simple blogging, this notion of syndication. Syndication comes to you. Now we know that this is all based on HTTP, and so you do have to get, but I mean the polling nature of this makes it appear as if it comes to you. And ah uh, yes, these permalinks that have become so popular in the blogosphere, what are those really? URIs, once again. So we have blogging systems that are actually incredibly restful as they're implemented. We have things like YouTube. I have a seven-year-old son at home. He loves Legos and he loves Star Wars, so he really loves Lego and Star Wars together, yeah, yeah. But we can see up in that corner, right next to the name, we have a subscribe button. 
And so wherever we go, there's this notion of we want to keep track of this information. We want this information to come back to us, whether it's JBoss bug fixes or the latest blog entry or the latest video by Lego Dude 123 The syndication, again, is kind of faded into the woodwork. It's out there in various implementations. We don't even think about it anymore. This is a very good book that focuses on the two most popular standards for syndication, RSS and Atom. And you'll see that there are libraries out there that you can use. This is Rome, which boy, I know it's very small, hard to see, but the, the acronym is for, um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, RSS and Atom Utilities for Java. So the R is for RSS. Um, the OM is for Atom. I mean, they really had to struggle to come up with this acronym. It's not a very good name. But um, they do say that all roads lead to syndication. And I do like that. Um, Rome is a Java library that speaks RSS, that speaks Atom, that makes it very easy for you to incorporate this into your application as well. So focusing on RSS, RSS is very much syndication 1.0, much like SOAP. It was the earliest implementation, so it's the implementation we're all familiar with. But there's some problems with it. First of all, we can't even agree what it stands for. Some people say that it stands for RDF, Site Summary. Any f fans of Semantic Web out there? Yeah, I mean the semantic web, RDF site summary. And then someone else says, well, it's this rich site summary or really simple syndication. And now, much like SOAP, it doesn't stand for anything. It's just three letters. The problem with this is that out of all these different versions out there, we find that Netscape was releasing several of the versions and Dave Weiner, remember Dave Weiner, right? Mr. SOAP as well was releasing versions as well. Netscape was really trying to push a semantic web version of this, and Dave Weiner is looking for a very simple, easy set of specifications. And so at some points, like RSS 0.9.1, they're both numbered the same, but they're mutually incomprehensible. They're two different frameworks that have the same version number. That is a problem. Yeah? So even though RSS is very popular, you can see it's had kind of a tumultuous childhood. But it's still perfectly valid as a format. If we go out to Yahoo, we'll see they present their weather as an RSS feed. Whoa, problem loading page. All right, let's see if we can do this version. A good developer always has the page pulled up, doesn't he? Yeah? I'm hoping that I'll be able to live demo it, but if not, they provide this weather feed to us as an RSS feed. Why do you think they choose RSS for this? Maybe because weather has a very temporal nature to it, very time-oriented nature. You don't want the weather from last week or last month. When you make this web services call, you want the current weather. You want today's weather right now at this moment. And so they chose RSS as the way to serve it up. <sighs> no network, bummer. But we do much the same thing. We make a restful call. You pass in a zip code. This is US only. I apologize about that. But it'll return an RSS response. And eventually, there we go. We'll be able to see that this RSS response has a channel and gives us the weather information, in this case for Sunnyvale, California, forecasts and everything else. So normally I would do a live presentation of this. Doesn't look like we have any internet anymore. You must be ready to go home, yeah? Don't worry, only two more hours and then we're done. So stay, sit tight, we'll be fine. Yeah, no, no, we're getting very close to the end. 